picture where I need to take the image, which is reasonably square-like, and I need to make it fit on a billboard proportion, so I need to add a ton of extra space over here. First up, grab the layer in Photoshop. It's called background. Pull it down to this icon here, which will duplicate the layer. That's going to leave me the original background untouched, and it's only going to make changes on top of this one or any layer I build on top of that. I'm going to go ahead and go up to image, pull down to image size. Make sure the resample button for what I'm doing right now is unchecked. So if it was like this, make sure it's unchecked. Change the height to be 11. Click OK. Image. Canvas size. I need this to fit 25 inches wide. I'm going to click on this button so that it shoves all the extra space to the left or in this direction or over on this side of the page. Click OK. Command 0 makes it fit the window. So my first reaction is to maybe see what the Content Aware Scale tool does. Grab the rectangle. Draw a rectangle. But uh, that touches the left side of this, but does not touch the dog. So I'm maybe going to stop it right about here. I'm going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to pull down the Content Aware Scale. Grab this thing on here on the side. Pull to the left. The only problem, and again, I should normally try to do it in two steps, but ultimately this is what's going to look like. And that is, it's taking the round flowers and it's stretching them out to this goofy proportion. And there's probably so much more of a difference here than there is over here. This is not going to be a good option for me. I'm going to just go ahead and click OK and leave that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the background layer. Again, the original one. I'm going to move my background to my new one on top of it and hide this one with an eyeball. So let's try something else. Let's go get the clone stamp tool. It's the tool right underneath the paintbrush. Click on it. Come up here, make sure that I have zero hardness. I can adjust the size of the paintbrush up or down by hitting the open and close bracket keys after the P on the keyboard. So the open bracket key makes my brush go smaller. My close bracket key makes it get bigger. In this case, I'm gonna maybe start about 600. Take the clone stamp tool, move over onto some of the flowered area. Pull down the option button and it's, the tool turns to a gun target. This is where it's sampling the color and the texture from. Let go. Come over here and start to say I'm going to swirl a little bit. And then I'm going to move down. And as I can see this, I can see the little plus symbol where it's pulling the color from. I can continue to reset this. Click here. Maybe add some in here. Up here. Try to move straight over and swirl, then I can move up, move down. When I'm done with that section, again, continue on. Option click here, reloads the flowers, start to brush again. If I go too far, that's because I'm trying to clone way over here, but the plus symbol that's maybe a little bit to the right has run out of stuff that it can pull from. So I could sit here and try to do this to recreate all of my flowers, and then up here, my patch of my grass. And it's going to take a while, and I think that in some cases, the flower part is actually starting to look pretty good. My problem is that when I get up in here, this is looking pretty awful. It's leaving a bunch of streaks and stuff like that, because that was something that was in the picture right here originally. So I'm kind of thinking this is not a good option. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the background copy in the trash. I didn't like that. I'm going to go back to the original. Make another duplicate of it. I have a brand new background copy too. Move it on top. Let go in this little pale bar shows that it's at the top of the window. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to drawing a rectangle. Which is about here. Edit. Copy. Edit. Paste. And I can now see that I have a new thing called layer one. And what that is, is I've got another copy of this flower sitting right here on top. You can kind of tell that by this preview. Go get the move tool. I'm going to start to move it to the left. If I'm worried that I'm also dropping down or moving up in Photoshop or any uh, Adobe program, you can hold shift to kind of lock it so that it just moves it side to side. So I can do that. Now, I think that this is starting to be a good idea. Although, again, I'm still seeing this pattern showing back up. I'm going to do one other goofy trick. I'm going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to pull down to Transform, and I'm going to tell it to flip horizontal. And at least by doing this, my picture was light to dark, and then it was starting over again as 
light to dark, which was leaving this heavy scene. So if I just did this instead, again, transform, flip horizontal. Okay, it may look kind of weird, especially here in the middle, but at least it went light to dark and then kind of dark to light again, and I've got more of a seamless area in here. Now go get the clone stamp tool. And the one thing, I think I see kind of like a butterfly shape showing up in here. So I'm going to option click with the clone stamp here and click on here and nothing happens. Ah, that's because this is on one layer, layer one, and the this, this edge of the seam is still part of background two. So what I need to do is I need to merge these two layers together so I can have more opportunity to be able to blend them. So to do that, I make sure that I'm on the top layer one, I come to this hamburger icon, click on it, and I tell it to merge down. And that's going to fuse my original background copy two with my stuff from layer one. And now I'll have an easier time coming in here and getting rid of that little pattern thing. I think there's something weird going on here. So I'm going to option click here and I'm just going to re-rub some new flowers in there. And then something looked weird on these guys. So I'm just going to grab over here. I'm going to kind of get rid of them. And I could come in here and take the time to try to smooth this out a little bit. But once I feel that I've done what I needed to here, now I can again grab here, make another copy of a rectangle, edit, copy, edit, paste. Go get the move tool, move it to the left. I'm holding the shift button down. I don't see as big of a seam anymore, so I don't have to worry about doing that whole flip horizontal. Oops, I need to do that until I don't have a white seam. Cool. Now again, I need to merge this down. So while I'm on layer one, click on the hamburger icon, merge it down. So what I have left down here is my original untouched background. My background copy where I did the content or scale, which again is often the first try. And now I'm working on this. Again, I can come back with my clone stamp tool. And I can option click here and head for the scene. Just trying to get rid of any area in here that maybe looks like I could see where I'd fuse these pieces together. I'm going to come in here and try to add a few more flowers. Don't like that. Command Z. Try that one more time. And then I'll decide that this is pretty good. So now my choice is do I like this one where I did cutting and pasting of chunks and then cloning to try to fix it? Or do I like the one that's stretched? I hope that you like this one better, except I'm not really wild about some of this in here. So I'm going to fix it one more time by doing a little bit of painting. In this case, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go get the eyedropper tool. I'm going to go ahead and click one of the darker greens up in here. I'm going to actually not duplicate a layer. I'm going to click create a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to go get the paintbrush tool. I've loaded up this weird green that I sampled from the picture, and now I can see what would it look like if I just painted some of that across here to kind of get rid of some of that pattern. If for some reason I thought, well, it got rid of the smoothness, um, it got rid of the pattern, but now it made it too smooth because you're just painting. The shortcut I can do is hold down Command Shift F, which pops up the fade box. If it's at 100%, that means don't fade. Leave what I just did. If I slide this to zero, I go all the way back and I see this. I could probably pick some spot somewhere along in here that allowed it to be some kind of combination of the two. I might even try that right in here. And maybe even over in here. And then do the same thing. Fade. All of it. None of it. Maybe somewhere in between where I'm just trying to tone down that weird blotchiness that I'm getting from the background. Fortunately, I'm covering these picture, this picture up with a lot of text over here, so I don't have to worry about the background being perfect. If you like this, file save as a Photoshop file and import it on into your InDesign document.